Today, we're gonna to be talking about AI agents. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've been hearing about these in the news, you've been seeing news articles, and a good portion of you may be wondering, what are these things and how do they apply to me personally? Hi, I'm Bijan and this is my channel. If you have not before seen my face on your screen, welcome. I like to make videos about AI and things of that sort with a focus on open source and things that can be run locally on our own hardware. With that said, let's get right into it. AI agents have been an extremely hot topic recently. However, something that does frustrate me is that a lot of the coverage about them have been pertaining to business use cases. Now, for those of us like myself who are not a Fortune 500 company, let's go ahead and do a shallow dive into a very deep pool on AI agents and what they are and what they mean for the layman. I think one of the biggest barriers to actually understanding AI agents is that there doesn't seem to be a widely agreed upon definition as to what an AI agent actually is. It is difficult to understand something that does not seem to have a really structured foundational agreed upon definition. Being that that is the case, I am going to hopefully offer a more simple yet metaphorical palatable way to define an AI agent. We're all familiar with ChatGPT. And when you speak to ChatGPT, it's like being able to talk to an intelligent advisor. It can tell you what to do and give you advice. However, you as a human need to then go ahead and actually perform those actions that it suggests. An agent is something that has the intelligence of ChatGPT, but also the ability to actually go and autonomously perform the suggestions that ChatGPT would have made. So instead of saying, okay, I understand your query, you need to go do X and Y. It says, okay, I understand the user's query, now I am going to do X and Y. There could be a comment brought up like, hey, how does this differ from just general automation? And I think one of the best ways to explain that is by saying that an agent will not fail if it encounters something unknown. Whereas a traditional kind of robotic process automation method may only adhere to a very structured format, and if it encounters unseen data or unseen exceptions, it may fail. An agent can see that and say, okay, I've encountered this, and now I would like to go ahead and figure out a way to deal with it. Now, for those of us who are, as myself, visual learners, I want to actually go ahead and give a visual example as to what the heck I'm even talking about. So, what we're going to do is first hop onto the computer here where we have ChatGPT a traditional chat with a traditional AI that most of us are likely familiar with at this point. And I am simply going to just kind of drag this computer over here and ask it a question. Now we can see that I have asked it to find me a winning investment strategy and do it. And kind of going back to the original example of differentiating this versus an agentic AI, it just kind of gives me a list of things that I would then have to just kind of go ahead and do. Now, how would an agent actually differ in trying to accomplish this same specific prompt of find me a winning investment strategy and do it? To do that, we're going to hop over to a computer that actually has a rather complicated and semi-powerful agentic framework running on it, thanks to the Autogen Magentic One from Microsoft, which I have forked to run with a local AI, which I maybe perhaps a bit technical for this video, but Essentially, to put it simply, the AI we're going to try this now has agentic capabilities, and all of that is contained within my local machine. So it's not using any external paid AIs, nothing like ChatGPT or Claude or Google Gemini. It's all happening locally and on the computer itself. So now we're going to see things work a bit differently, but this will hopefully do a good job of just kind of visually explaining the difference between an AI agent and a ChatGPT style AI. So I'm gonna hop on over here and type the same exact thing into my terminal there, and we're going to see a vastly different behavior. Now, you'll have to pardon me if I kind of crane my head a bit oddly here because I do not have this set up very well to actually film what I'm doing on that computer and speak to the camera, but essentially what's going on here is there are AI agents thinking about the task and actually the orchestrator, which is an agent, is actually delegating the task to sub agents which have different tools or capabilities of which they can actually take advantage of. So basically what it's telling it to do right now is search the internet for proven investment strategies. 
Now, the point of this example is not necessarily to specifically look at the actual output and see if it's good or not. This is more of a way to architecturally understand the design and functionality differences between just doing this through ChatGPT and actually using an AI agent. I understand this could perhaps be a bit verbose, but I do believe that at the end of this, it will make a bit more sense. We can see right there that it did actually just do something and it said stalled and replanning. Now, as I had mentioned earlier, one of the big things about agents is that they can almost encounter roadblocks and think their way around them. Something that perhaps traditionally like an automation framework or something would not be capable of doing. So we can actually see here that there are a few things going on. So this is actually browsing the web right now and the screenshots that are appearing on the screen are actually screenshots it is outputting from its virtual web browser that it is actually navigating along the web. So we can see here that it has come up with something that it thinks is perhaps a prudent investment vehicle and it is now talking about tax loss harvesting, which truth be told, I have no clue what that is. This is the first I've ever heard of it. And we can see again, it has stalled and it has replanned. However, it is actually functioning autonomously in that it understood initially there was a goal I wanted it to achieve, and it's trying a whole bunch of different ways to actually achieve that goal. Now, this AI model that is running this is a very small Llama 3 vision model, an 11B parameter for those of us a bit more technical. But essentially, if I were to have this hooked up to a paid service like ChatGPT or something that businesses would go for, the actual power and capabilities that this would be displaying right now would be far better than what we're seeing, which honestly is not that bad. It's now asking the coder agent to actually go ahead and write up an investment strategy code. I don't know, because I'm not really looking at it that much, but I can just kind of see what it's doing. And we can see it is outputting some code. Now it's going back to the web browser, etc. Now, if I leave this running for a while, it will very likely just glitch out. And that is more of a function of that this is running a small local model, which Microsoft didn't actually release it to be able to do. I actually forked this myself so it could run with the local LLM because uh, eh, subscriptions. But I just wanted to show this because I think this is kind of a simple visual way to understand what an AI agent is. We had ChatGPT. We asked it the same thing. We said, hey, find me this winning investment strategy. It gives us essentially a to-do list that we have to then go and do. If we ask the agent, which is still going away behind me very loud as I can hear the fans, it actually goes ahead and thinks, delegates tasks, autonomously performs tasks, and finds its way around roadblocks it may encounter. That is really the big difference and why agents are so hot, at least in a business sense. Now we can see here that it has kind of finished in its own way, which just means, hey, man, I tried this enough, like I'm tapped out 30 um, we can just kind of ignore that, but I, I am just going to open some of these screenshots here so we can actually see what this thing was doing on the internet because it is quite fascinating actually to see them. I'm gonna, sorry. So it looked up winning investment strategies first and foremost. Okay, it's, it seems to have found some form of large pop-up ad and it's, <laughs> okay, apparently it makes less than 40000 a year. Um, it's gone back to Google. Or, I don't, okay, that, I, I don't know why that said Google and then went to Bing, but I'm just going to, okay, so it's, then you can see there that it appended for beginners, so it must have not been satisfied with what it was actually getting originally, so, all right, and then it goes back, and what we can see here are just kind of little, we call them bounding boxes, and they are essentially there to allow the AI to actually identify elements on the page. Um, that is perhaps for more of a technical video, but just if you see those and you're confused as to what they're there for, those are just so the AI can say like, hey, I want to click right here, which it would understand as like ID 260. So it would understand that. So they help it navigate, if you will. And we can just scroll through. So these are these screenshots with the bounding boxes on them. So what we already saw, but this is kind of some of its web browsing behavior. And we can see that it wasn't really doing much, but... From an agentic point of view, this was very much functioning in an autonomous and capable manner. To sum up what we just saw, as I may have gone on a bit of a convoluted tangent, 
Essentially, this was a look at the architectural differences that can help us understand what an AI agent is. As we saw, ChatGPT basically gave us a to-do list, and it was perhaps good advice, but it was things that we would have to then go ahead and do. The agent basically took that and said, okay, I need to figure this out on my own, and I'm going to try a bunch of different ways to do it. Now, of course, because of the low power agent I was running, it really didn't do a very good job of that. However, it was autonomously functioning. It was utilizing tools it had available to itself. It was stalling and then replanning, meaning that it was dealing with quote unquote unforeseen circumstances, if you will. And it was in general exhibiting more autonomous behaviors that I believe could perhaps give a good visual definition to what an AI agent is and how it is different from something like ChatGPT. Well, it is likely no surprise that I am a big fan of AI and excited by its progress. I do not want to blindly overlook that the agentic capabilities do perhaps have downsides for specific individuals. Now, I am not going to go ahead and try to explain what the net positives and net negatives of this will be depending on what you do and things of that sort. However, I understand there is a large subset of the population who is averse to AI, and I just want to kind of put a quick disclaimer here that I totally understand those concerns, and I think it is important to perhaps just think about these things and be aware of AI and the agentic capabilities, even if you dislike these things. I think it's just of a benefit to have knowledge of them, regardless of your opinion on them. Now, with that out of the way, I do quickly want to address what I assume would be a logical question after watching this video, and that is, okay, I want to play with an agent, what would you recommend? Now, in the YouTube world, and essentially if you just Google AI agents, there are going to be a lot of startups and software as a service platforms who are going to be quite happy to sell you, oh, uh, sign up for my AI agent platform and you can do this. I am not currently trying to sell you anything. <laughs> and I say currently like I'm probably not going to in the future, but I don't know. So sponsors hit me. No, I'm kidding. But really... <laughs> if I'm going to make a few suggestions, they are going to be things I've personally used and that I have had good experiences with and that do not cost you money to use. With that out of the way, the first is called Anything LLM. Now, I actually did a video on this and just getting it set up and things like that. This essentially allows you to host an AI locally on your machine and chat with it as you would in a chat GPT style interface. However, anything LLM also has agentic capabilities. And what I mean by that is they are quite simple currently. However, you can actually implement a custom agent in here that can perhaps perform a specific task. I actually went ahead and wrote a simple agent here that would basically just list the top X number of Spotify songs in a specific locale. So it could just basically perform that autonomously. The reason I bring up anything LLM first is that I would imagine a lot of beginners are probably interested in AI agents. And this is something where you can essentially bypass the need to get into the programming and the back end of these sorts of things. So I won't say it's just plug and play, but essentially you can download it and you can likely quite easily get acquainted with its use case without needing to have a lot of pertinent technical knowledge, which of course is fantastic for anyone wanting to get started in any form of technical area. So anything LLM is something that I have used and I do have good things to say about it just in terms of how it has actually integrated some agentic capability. I see they have a nice website here and I would imagine um, it's also something that will ultimately transition to a paid tier as well, but this is totally hearsay, so I just wanna point that out. But again, you can click on the GitHub here and see that it is open source. It does have a large amount of stars, especially for a GitHub repository, and they do have their source code here and things like that. So I do like seeing anything that I want to suggest be on GitHub as well, because it just seems to give a little more open source kind of cachet to it, if you will. With this out of the way, if you do want to get a little more in-depth and technical, I would highly recommend Microsoft's AutoGen. Now, 
Autogen is perhaps more than just an agentic framework. However, for our specific purpose here, I do want to mention that they now have this sort of web ecosystem that you can actually download and run locally here. So it's called Autogen Studio. I haven't played with this beyond just installing it on my machine and actually browsing to this web address to see what it looks like. However, Magentic One, which is something that they mentioned here, is what we actually looked at earlier in the video when we saw on the beefy system behind me, it was actually going about and browsing on the internet and doing funny things. So this is actually something that will allow you to almost drag and drop build agents. However, I would like to make note that this is designed to work with just like an OpenAI API key, which means that you would have to sign up for an OpenAI API tier, which is a separate entity from just a chat GPT subscription. And it's essentially like a monthly cost for how much you actually use the model with your API calls. Um, a bit more technical, however, Magentic One is very cool, and I liked it so much, as a matter of fact, that I actually um, forked a version of this, which just means like you kind of take something someone else made and like add an ingredient or two to it, and then you get to put it up yourself. So I did that with Magentic One so that it would run with a local LLM so you wouldn't have to spend money on API keys, and that's what we saw as well earlier when it was browsing the web and doing a so-so job. So, these are the two things that I think are pretty cool that I have personally used and can recommend. If I have not mentioned something that is popular, it does not mean that I don't like it. It's truly just that these are the only things I've actually tried hands-on, and I just kind of err on the side of caution when I want to suggest something. If I haven't touched it, I'm <laughs> not going to suggest it to people blindly. So basically, that is kind of that sort of conclusion of the video, I suppose we could say. I really have found that I am quite bad at outros, so I kind of just try to segue into them when it feels natural, and that is really going to go ahead and conclude this video. I hope that this was educational and beneficial. All right, <laughs> thanks for watching.